Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we're going to discuss about ransomware. And ransomware has huge publicity because of the way it actually gets into the public. So when a user gets hit by ransomware, it is loud, it is obnoxious, and it's really frightening. So we get a lot of media reach, a lot of people coverage on all these kind of attacks. And what I've done is the past couple of hours, I have decided to really dissect into what ransomware does. It's a malware that has a ransom effect. And what it does is encrypts into systems. And I have built a code so that we can better understand and educate ourselves how ransomware works and then be able to actually protect ourselves against those attacks. So before we get into the highlights of the ransomware that I've built within a confined space, strictly for educational purposes, and to really understand it, and so that we can know how we can defend against those type of attacks. So it's really important that ransomware has a few stages, and from there on, you can better understand how it works out. So without further ado, let's kickstart today's tutorial. So here we have the high level overview of the ransomware anatomy. I wanted to show this first as a lecture slide because it's really important that we understand the concept and then we start drilling down the details so you understand what's going on from a high level and then you're able to battle keep track of what's going on. So that's really critical. So in version one, which is what we will go through today, we have the payload that will encrypt the critical data and it comes with a dialog box. So again, very simple way of really for you to understand how the whole concept of a ransom malicious software works. And on version two, we're gonna use vulnerabilities. And again, the vulnerabilities can be extensive. It can be any of those vulnerabilities that you can think of, like the eternal blue that you saw earlier on this on the earlier videos. Or it could be like using the VLC vulnerability, and then we inject the payload, which is the ransomware, into the environment. And then there's again there's many multiple attack vectors that we can use through and bait the payload and then deliver it into the machines. And finally, persistence. What do we do if the vulnerability do not get exploited fully, get closed halfway? Can we maintain and persist elevated privileges within the system all done automatically within the malware? And on version three, this is where we get really complicated, where we have a lot of understanding of the network. So we will have command control server, hosting and managing all of those exploited agents. And finally, encrypt the traffic and encode the payload to bypass and evade antivirus as well as network intrusion prevention systems. So this is the high level overview of these different stages of a ransomware anatomy. And it's really important for you to understand so you know what goes on behind the mind of a cyber criminal or cyber gang and why do they build up and what is the intention and the features that they will build. And then you will be better able to defend yourself against this type of attack as you manage your enterprise environment. So let's go ahead and go into here. We got Oracle VirtualBox. So I got Kali Linux running and I got a Windows 10 running. So on the right side, I can enter ls-l. So I got all of the files that I have on my root directory. And we're gonna focus on today's topic, which is ransomware. So you can see it right here. We got a .c file. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you will know about how we use Burp Suite, Comics, common vulnerability exposure, how we embed that into Metasploit. We get NoSQL injection, NoSQL map, and so on. So really powerful. A lot of things you can learn by subscribing to the channel. So here we're gonna compile. I'm not gonna show you the source code of the ransomware. So that's really important because we are working in a confined space. All of this is done for educational purposes and strictly to better understand how ransomware works so that we can better defend ourselves. So the source code will not be released to anybody. So the high level overview is really important so that you understand what version one of the ransomware will do. So here we are going to compile the .c file into an executable on Windows 64 bit. And then when you hit enter, that will compile the file and we will move this file, which is loy ransomware.exe into a, let's say a Apache web server. And once we do that, we can actually go to var www.html and enter ls. So here we got a bunch of files. So likewise, like what I mentioned earlier, it's really important for you to subscribe to the channel because we have went through so many tutorials and you have learned so many things already. And the first thing we want to do is we can go and hop over into the Windows 10 environment and we can go into Internet Explorer. So here we have the IP address of Colonix and a pod 8001. And all you got to do is enter the name of the file, hit enter. 
and you can save this file save as i'm going to save it into desktop so when we save it in the desktop i'm going to replace the previous version so there's slight amendments to the to this executable that we've created so when you double click on it hopefully you can see it clearly from here so once you double click on it it will execute and of course there's many ways to actually push in the attack vectors but to speed up the tutorial today we will just go straight and run anyway so there's many ways for you to actually hit the ransomware you can actually export vulnerabilities like the eternal blue which is smb version one or you can exploit the vlc player which you saw earlier on just the previous video and again there's many many ways you can do that so today's focus is on the payload and then we can enter for example a file dot called hack.txt and we hit enter straight away we get the encrypted string and here we can see that it's a version one of the ransomware so it's very straightforward what it does is that if you look and check between the actual file content which is you have been hacked and into the encrypted string so here how do you decipher the encryption what do you think is the encryption engine behind it and how do you decrypt it and then likewise there is a separate function immediately after this it will remove all files that has been encrypted and what it does is that it forces the user to actually pay in bitcoin in order for you to actually decrypt those files so there you have seen it how quickly we could actually build a ransomware and there are many different types of ransomware and now we're on version one so the whole idea is for education purposes to better understand how the hackers are doing it how the cyber criminals are doing it and why are they doing it so what are the features in the future development of them and as we move into version 2 3 and 4 then we recognize how we can actually have an end state in mind how we can build command and control servers that could actually work directly with the installed agent on the machines and then how we can have persistence how we can bypass antivirus and so on so all these will come subsequently as we reach to greater levels of understanding about the cybersecurity domain so at the same time, the question will be, how do we defend ourselves against this type of attacks? And it's really actually very straightforward. There are just three key points. So the first point is always be patched, whether you're on Windows operating systems, whether it's server, Windows 10, Windows 8, and so on, or even Macintosh. You want to make sure that you're always patched, not just on the operating system level, but also on a software application level because a lot of the exploits targets on the operating system as well as the application on top of it. So it's really important that you have a strong patch hygiene across the entire enterprise. Number two is that users must have limited privileges within the systems and applications so that when there is a trigger of a potential executable, immediately their privileges halt them from executing those malicious behaviors and sometimes we call them indicators of compromise from a cybersecurity term. So when you do that, you are able to immediately stop them because they do not have the privileged accesses to access into critical data that are then going to be encrypted by the ransomware. And number three is to really have an understanding about if you get hit, if the ransomware is a very powerful and is evasive against antivirus systems, and then it gets triggered ultimately then what is the incident response plan? How do you contain it? How do you remediate the ransomware? There has to be a process within the enterprise to stop this type of attacks. And you need to have those step-by-step -step instructions or automation immediately to stop those threats. So with that, we come to the end of the tutorial. And today's video is strictly for educational purposes. And I hope you learned something valuable. And if you have any comments, feel free to leave a comment below. Like, subscribe, and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. And thank you so much for watching.